They need to point it down. Uh, point it down. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Down. One of the lights is reflecting on the board. You need to point it up. Yeah. It's One too bright. Is, I see it. It's reflecting. You're not, you're, you're not, audio is not on. I can't hear you. Oh. The audio is not on. Dad? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, turn your computer. Hang on just a second. Hang on. too bright dad the lights reflecting on your board yeah i see it there that's what i was telling you earlier okay i'm trying to get this silly camera to hold still it, it's being kind of ornery actually Okay, so I, I need to uh, let's see what I can do about this light. Whoops. Uh, I just have one light on. Now that's not too bad, is it? No, but you need to center your computer. Like, scoot it over to the left a little bit. Okay. Wednesday's cut off. All right. Uh, Maybe scoot it back just an inch or something. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, okay. Can Can you read the Wednesday? Okay. Yes, sir. Hey, good. Who, who am I talking to? My name's Taylor. Ah, uh, good going, Taylor. Taylor, yeah. You, you, you've had my class before, haven't you, Taylor? Uh, let's see. I don't believe I have, actually. It's my first time taking dynamics. Oh, all right. Yeah, but I mean, didn't you have me for another class? Uh, not here recently. The last three years I've been in Stillwater. Oh, okay. Familiar face, I, I guess. Oh, I'm getting you mixed up with Tyler. You're you know, that wouldn't be the first time I've been mixed up with a Tyler. Okay. Hey, Dad, just don't forget to pin yourself once you start lecturing. I'm sorry, go ahead. Say that again. Don't forget to pin yourself once you start lecturing. The video? Yeah, don't forget to pin your video once yeah, you start lecturing. I'm trying to pin myself, but I forget how to do it. Those three little um, little dots, and it'll say "pin yourself." Okay, well, I don't I don't see the three little dots. The top right hand corner of your screen, it should be if you hover over it. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I don't see any three little dots. I see nine little dots. Or that might be it. Well, I don't know. Am I? Are you guys seeing what I'm the board there? Yeah. Yeah, it's working now, I think. Okay. All right. Now, Taylor, what's your last name? My last name is Sunday, like the day of the week. Okay. Let me put you down here. 
All hey, right. Taylor, did you pay your money? Which money? Well, when you take classes at TCC, you, you got to pay for them, you know. <laughs> yeah, but there's the like, money for the classes, and then there's the money for the books, and then there's the money for the materials. <laughs> I'm talking about the money for the class. Uh, yes, I have made my first uh, installment payment. Well, I think we're okay then. That's all yeah, we care so. about. We just all we care about is your money. I know it. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, let me see who else is uh, who else is playing. All right. Oh, I've got a whole lot of wonderful students. Look here. I've got Ryan, Taylor, Ashley, Gage, Megan, and. William so far got a good good class. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I ever pinned myself though. Are you still on there Rebecca? Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. Okay, well let's uh let's start our class. Now this is our second class. And according to the course schedule, we're still in chapter 12. We're supposed to study acceleration today. And I gave you some homework and there's some new homework here that's due August 22nd. Well, when's that? Uh, let's see, this is the 19th. Today's Wednesday, 35. I guess it's Saturday. You're going to have some more homework due Saturday. Just not much. Two problems there. And you got you guys can hear me all right, right? Everybody can hear me okay? Yes, sir. Great. Uh, well, what about some others there? How about Ma Megan? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear just fine. Great. Wonderful. Well, let's just go over um, <clears throat> what we're going to get into today is uh, two-dimensional stuff. Every, everything we did uh, Monday was one-dimensional, and we're going to get into two dimensions today. But uh, let me go over what we know so far. We've got these equations uh, that go like this. Now, now that S there, that S can stand for uh, X, Y, or Z. It's just a dummy variable. It stands for position. And the other equation goes like this. A am I writing dark enough? Can you guys read that? If you can't, let me know. And uh, there was a third equation that we cooked up. It went like this. That equation we got from these. We uh, combined those. We did some algebra and we got that. And then I told you about some uh, constant acceleration equations. And they go like this. And there's a fourth one that goes like this. Uh, it goes like this. But now, 
Th these equations can all be derived from these equations here. But they, they're not always good. In fact, uh, I oftentimes put a skull and crossbones over these equations here and warn my students be very careful about using these equations because they're not always good. Put a little skull and crossbones on there, sort of as a warning. All, all of these equations are, they're only good if you have, uh, same here, skull and crossbones, there you go. Those <clears throat> equations are only good if you have constant acceleration. And in fact, some, some people put a little C underneath the A to remind you there is no A in that one, but it has to be constant. It's based on constant acceleration. And I told you guys, you can derive those. In fact, I think I derived these two. I didn't derive that one, but it can be derived from that. Here, let's just derive it. Let's show you. If you take uh, ADS equals VDV and you integrate it, we showed you this one. You can get it by combining these two. These two here are the uh, fundamental equations for kinematics. Okay, now if you'll integrate these, the beauty is if acceleration is constant, you can pull it out of the integral. You guys all took calculus and you know that that can be pulled out. And then if you go from zero to some value s, that's just equal to the acceleration times delta s. And this, if this goes from uh, v0 to v is equal to v squared over 2 v0 to v, which is, of course, equal to v squared over 2 minus v0 squared over 2. And I bet you can get from here <coughs> to here. Just multiply by two and you'll have this equals two times that. Bottom line is V squared minus V sub zero squared equals two A. If the acceleration is constant, that is. Now here's, here's the problem with, with my students. They get a hold of an equation like this or, or these others. And, and they'll use it even when you can't use it. So you can only use those if acceleration is constant. See, in calculus, you can't pull that out of the integral unless it's constant. So that I know what you guys are going to do. Some of you are going to go ahead and use these equations anyway, even though when you, you won't, you're not allowed to, and you'll get the wrong answer. But at least I told you. Okay, well, today we're going to talk about two dimensions. And that was a quick review of what we've studied so far. Is there any questions? Do you have any questions? Well, okay, we're gonna we're gonna work a problem now. Uh, this one here, I thought we could do is uh, twelve seventy nine. <clears throat> Let me find that in the book here. Twelve seventy nine. It's on page uh, 50.
me find that. There it is. Well, if you don't have any questions on any of that, we're going to do 1279. We got all our equations. And we're going to do uh, 12. Seventy nine. It's on page fifty. Okay. <clears throat> okay. It says there uh, you've got a parabola. So let me let me draw the para parabola. It's a parabola that kind of goes yeah, like that. <clears throat> and you've got a. Uh, particle traveling along the here's a particle and it's zooming along the parabola this is your x and the y and they said that y is equal to 0.5 x squared okay and then what they said uh, the x component of the velocity, let me write that down. They said the x component of the velocity is 5t uh, feet per second. Uh, determine the particle's distance and its acceleration when t equals one second. Now they're saying it when you start the clock, it starts off here at x equals zero, y equals zero, t equals zero. So that, that's where it starts off. And it takes off and it zooms up that parabola. And this is a two-dimensional problem. We've been working in one dimension. Now the equations for uh, two dimensions, uh, they go like this. You're familiar, you're familiar with the X and Y components. See, see this right here, <clears throat> that's your X component of your particle. And over here, that's your Y component. Uh, the particle has an X distance and a Y distance. And, and you know the I, uh, unit vector is always in the x direction these are called unit vectors j you know all about that you know about i j and k we're just going to do i and j we're going to do two dimensions here now this r here is called the position vector and i'll tell you what it is it goes from here to here there you go that's your position vector r that's the name of it it's called the position vector is that how you spell position it doesn't look right i think that's right yeah okay uh, that's called the position vector Isn't that funny how sometimes uh, it doesn't look right, but I think it is right. That's the position vector. And if you want the uh, velocity, well, what you have to do is you have to take the derivative 
of your position vector. In fact, uh, I think we're kind of messing with your mind here because we used S for position before, you know, S, we used T, S, V, and A. And here I'm using R for position. Uh, sorry to confuse you. I guess you could put an S in there. Wouldn't make any difference. But if you take the derivative of this, I'll tell you what you'll get. You'll get uh, dx dt in the i and dy dt in the j. Now they have other names for that. Do I have room to write that? No, I think I just ran out of room. <clears throat> Do I have room over here? Not much. Uh, let me write it up here. You could also write this as Vx i plus Vy j, where Vx is is the x component. That's that's what dx dt is. It's the x component. And dy dt, uh, that's the y component of your velocity. Uh, you could even write it like this if you wanted. I instead of, uh, you you'll discover in this book that they have a shorthand. If they put a dot over the x, what that means is the first derivative of your x uh, position with respect to time. And this here is y dot j. Just another way of, see, y dot is dy dt. So you'll, you'll get familiar with that. Now you can and take the, the derivative of that even and get the, uh, wait a minute, this is a vector. You could take the derivative of that and get the acceleration. They they wanted the acceleration. So let me write that. Professor Griffin. Yeah, go ahead. On on the x dot, do we still need the i hack with it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I'm going to give you a thank you point now. Was that my friend Megan? Yes, it was. That was Me Megan. Gets a thank you point. Good going, Megan. You guys are so easy to teach because you, you stay awake during this. And that's wonderful. I think I have it right now. Now, if you wanted to write the uh, acceleration, I'm gonna have to erase, erase some of this and make some room here in a minute, but this is good stuff. The, the acceleration, you know what that is. It's the derivative of your velocity. It's just that before we didn't have these vector uh, notation things. We just had one dimension. You didn't need vectors. See, when you get into two dimensions, you need vectors. And so if you wanted this, uh, one way of writing it would be, <clears throat> well, there's several ways of writing it. You could go d v x. I'll bore you here and write you all these different ways. Plus d v y. You could write it like that. Or you could write it like this. We'll get back to the problem in a minute. I'm just giving you guys some wonderful uh, theory here. Or you could even write it like this. Uh, 
you could even write it like this. Put a double dot on there. All, all these are the same. They're all saying the same thing. Now the double dot, what that means is the second derivative of your X component of your body with respect to time. And the Y double dot, that's the second derivative of your uh, Y component. Okay, well, that's all fascinating stuff, but um, we don't need any of that stuff. We got to solve our problem. So let me, let me make a little room here and uh, we're going to solve our problem now. Now that we know all that stuff. Now, what did they want? Let me read this again. They want the uh, the acceleration and the distance from the. Uh, they want this. They want to know where this, how long this r is. Well, I don't know what the x is or or the y. All I know is the t is one minute or one second. If you if you read it, it says t is one second. Okay. All right. Let's. Uh, <clears throat> Let's write the uh, let's write the um, we know that this is equal to dx dt. Uh, don't we? Is that right? I think so. We we know that uh, that that's what the x component of the velocity is. It's the first derivative of your x distance with respect to time. And now watch this now. We can go vx hmm, uh, vx dt equals dx. Can, can you get from here to here? This, this really is a definition, by the way. Now we can integrate this. Now see, when you integrate this, we're going to go from zero to uh, v and from zero to uh, x. No, no, that's not right. You don't put a v there. What, what do I put right there? I, I need somebody to help me. Let me find somebody here. Let's go to my friend William. William, if you're if you're awake, what what do I put right there? I'm integrating with respect to time. I want to go from zero to what, William? He's not going to tell me. Unmute. Am I, do I, did I mute people or what? Mute all, unmute all. There, I unmuted everybody. Somebody, somebody tell me, I got to put the right uh, limit here. I'm integrating with respect to time. We're going to go from zero to what time? You tell me, anybody. Five T. Say that again. Five T. Uh, well, no, no, One it's second. not 5t. 5t is the uh, x component of the velocity. I want to know what the time is. So is this what? any t? Just t? How much is it? t? Well, you could put a t there, but they, they give you what the t is. Read the problem. What does it say? One second. One second. So we're going to put one second in there. Okay, great. Well, we can integrate that. We know we know that this vx is 5t. Somebody said 5t. You don't put it up here, though. Here's where you put it. You go 5t dt from 0 to 1. And this gives you 
Well, it'll give you X. And so when you plug in your, uh, uh, when you solve that, I get uh, two and a half T squared. How about you guys? Now, I, I skipped a step. I'll go back and I'll go back and do that for anybody that needs me to. If you need me to, I'll get from here to here. Are you okay? I'm good. Yeah, I heard somebody say, I'm good. Okay, well now, if T is one second, I just figured out what X is. X is two and a half. And in this case, it's feet. So this distance here is two and a half feet. We're studying two dimensions today. And we found out that that distance is two and a half feet. Now let's find out what this distance is here. Well, plug it in. And now this time you're going to do it. Plug in two and a half feet. Can you read my writing that says 0.5? All right, I want you to plug in two and a half feet and tell me how big that Y is. And I'll pick on one of you. Why am I put punching stuff in my phone? I don't want my phone, I need my calculator. Okay, 0.5. Okay, I know what this Y is. Uh, what did you guys get? 3.125. That's what I got. I got 3.125 feet. Now we're going to get this R. Now that R has a name, and they wanted it. If you read the problem, they want the particles distance from the origin. Well, that's what that is. It's got a name. Does anybody remember what the name of that is? I'll cover that up because you're not supposed to see it. What's the name of it? Position vector. It's the position vector. That's the name of it. And to get it, you know how to get it. It's equal to it's equal to Mr. Pythagoras's thing. Two point five squared. Three point one two five squared. Okay, do that and tell me what you get. Four point zero zero. That's what I got. This distance here is four point oh oh. There's a bunch of numbers there, but that's good enough for me. It's four feet. Okay. So we've answered one of their questions. Uh, how far is this particle from the origin? Well, it's four feet. You could even get the angle if you wanted. Just for fun, let's get that angle. What we'll call that angle theta. And I'm going to get the angle, and I want you to get the angle. And then uh, we'll see if anybody gets it right here. Is it 28.9 degrees? Uh, I haven't got it yet, but I, I'm getting it now. No, it's not. Nope, it's not. Try again. Got 51.3 degrees. That's what I got. I got 51.34 degrees. Does that look like it might be 51 degrees to you guys? Looks pretty good to me. Okay, well, that was fun. Now, uh, <clears throat> you can express this uh, position vector in this form right here. You guys have studied. Uh, I think that went off the board. Dang it! Hey, sorry to sorry to interrupt, but when you do the uh, angle, you do inverse tangent, right? Yes, exactly. Is it x over y or y over x? Uh, 
Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, that's where I messed up. I bet you did. Uh, I bet you did that little angle up in the corner. Yep. Let me see what that would be. It's thirty-eight point six six degrees. Is that what you said? No, I said twenty-nine. Well, I don't I know how you got twenty-nine. Go back and do it again. You did something wrong. Well, I, I wanted to show you. Uh, <clears throat> we've got R and theta there. I wanted to show you something, and then we'll continue with our problem. We're not done yet. We're supposed to find the acceleration. I need uh, I need some room here, though, to do that. Now, I want to show you there's a difference between uh, R with, uh, that's supposed to be an R, with, with a vector sign over it, and R without a vector sign. Now, this, this R with a vector sign over it is called the position vector. Now, th that's an R without the vector sign over it, and it has a name. Does anybody know the name of that R without the vector sign on it? Anybody? Go ahead. Magnitude? Yeah, it's the magnitude. See, this is a vector. This is not a vector. This here is the magnitude of the vector. And we know how, how big it is. It's 4.0 feet. Good. Now you can write you can write the vector like this. Hope you can read my writing. Actually, you can write it like this too. You can write it as two point five, comma three point one two five. This is called uh, X, Y coordinates or Cartesian coordinates or rectangular coordinates. It's got different names. Does anybody know the name of, of this manner of writing the position vector? It's, it's another kind of coordinates. Does anybody know the name of it? The it's polar. Called, that's it. It's polar coordinates. You've seen it before. This is polar coordinates. See, this could be written as 4.0 comma, uh, what do we say, 51.34 degrees. There you have it. That's, that's your position vector in polar coordinates. OK, great. Well, let's find the acceleration now. Here we go. We're going to. That's all fascinating. We're going to find the acceleration now. I just don't have enough room to work here is my problem. Uh, let me make some room. We'll, we'll just make some room. Here we go. If you guys are taking notes, that would be very helpful to me because I'm <laughs> I might need some of that stuff I just erased. But they want to know the acceleration. Well, see, the acceleration, we know what that is. That's the derivative of the velocity. Well, what do we have the velocity? Uh, I don't know. Uh, the velocity, let's write it. The velocity is the velocity in the x and the velocity in the y. Hey, we know what this is. That's given in the problem. If you read the problem, it says um, that's 5t. So, so see, we got that. But I don't know what this uh, velocity in the y is. Hey, but I have I have y here, 
and I could take the derivative of it. See, you know what Vy is? That's the derivative of y with respect to t. I could take the derivative of that with respect to t, couldn't I? Well, let's do it. Here goes. The derivative of y with respect to t is 0.5 times 2. Well, that's 1, right? Times x to the 1. But we're not done. If we were taking the derivative with respect to x, we would be done. But we're not. We're taking the derivative with respect to t. So you have to use the chain rule. And you have to go dx dt. I hope I didn't lose you on that. I know you've heard of the chain rule. But the beauty is we know what dx dt is. It's given. Isn't that the 5t? So we have uh, 1 times x times 5t. So, so we're doing great. We got, uh, we, we've got, uh, so far we're doing great here. We, we just figured out what this is. It's x times 5t. So there's the velocity. <clears throat> but that's not what they wanted. They wanted the acceleration. Well, OK. Let's see what we can do. We, we want to find the acceleration. I think, that, I think there's enough room here we can do this. See, the acceleration is equal to, by definition, it's the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. Is that showing up? Yeah, I barely. Yeah, I'm just about at the bottom of the page there. I wonder if I could move this up just a tad. Is that on there? Yeah, I think you can see it. OK. Here we go. Uh, we got to take the derivative of 5t. Well, what's the derivative of 5t with respect to t? Well, they taught me in school many years ago. It's just plain old 5, isn't it? Did I do that right? The derivative of 5t with respect to t is just 5? All right. Now, if you don't like any of this, you speak up. Now, what we got to do now is take the derivative of, of this here with respect to t. Uh-oh, that's a product. Uh, when you have a product, that means you're multiplying. And you take the derivative of a product, you have to use the product rule. So you go x times the derivative of 5t, which is 5, right, plus 5t times the derivative of x, which is dx dt. That's the derivative of x times 5t. And I know what dx dt is. It's given. If you read the problem, it's 5t, isn't it? Yeah. So you could just substitute 5t in there. Okay, uh, I think we got everything we need now. <clears throat> now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, I'm forgetting my J here. All of this stuff is in the J direction. See, that, that's in the I direction. And then when you take the derivative of this, 
Uh, that's what you get, and that's in the J direction. Okay, well, let's plug that stuff in. I'm getting 5i. Now, x, we know x is 2 and a half. 2 and a half times 5. What's that? 2 and a half times 5. Is that 12 and a half? Yeah. Plus, now I, I know what dx dt is. It's 5t. But see, t is 1, so that's just 5 times 5 times 1. That's 25. So if I did that right, I'm getting, <clears throat> I got lost now. I'm getting 12 and a half plus 25. What's 12 and a half plus 25? I'm getting 37 and a half J. I, I wonder if I lost anybody on that. Should we just that be 25 T square? Since yeah, it's 5t nice. times 5t. Uh, no, wait a minute. You, you might be right. Let's see. We're taking, we're taking uh, x times the derivative of that, which is 5. Did that right. Plus the 5t times the derivative of x, which is, you're absolutely right. This whole thing. Okay, now wait a minute. I'm getting confused now. You got 5t times 5t. That's 25t squared, isn't it? See, th this term here, I don't have any room to write underneath there. This whole term here is 25t squared. You're absolutely right, but that's correct. 5t times 5t is 25t squared, but t is 1. So what you have is 25 x is two and a half so what's uh 25 plus uh well it's 12 and a half i'm getting 37 and a half i, I think i did that right who, who spoke up who was it that was that was me you're right i, I wasn't thinking that t was one yeah t you, is you, one. you skipped that step verbally and yeah, i wasn't thinking about that i skipped one. it because and tell me your name again uh, William. William. Thank you, William. William's right. It's a 25t squared because this is 5t. If I had time to write it, I would have written it, but I don't have time to write it. I'm at the bottom of my page, I think. W William, can you read that? Is that focused and clear enough to where you can read? Yeah, we can read that. Great. Great. Okay. Well, now we're going to get the acceleration. But I don't I ran out of room here, so we're gonna do it up here someplace. Um, there's room right here. We'll do it here. If you want to know how big the acceleration is, it's a square root of five squared plus 37.5 squared. See, th those are the components. And, and this is the magnitude. See, this is, this is the uh, vector, but this is the magnitude. Don't get them mixed up, they're different. All right, I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna get the acceleration now. The magnitude, I mean. And I'm getting a 37.83 feet is the magnitude of the acceleration. But see, it has components. Uh, let, let me draw you those components. Shouldn't that be feet per second squared for acceleration? <laughs> Honkin, thank you, point. Now, now, who was that? Was that William? That was Stuart. Stuart, Stuart, good. Stuart, you came through for me again. Good going. Yeah, this is wrong. <laughs> Stuart is absolutely right. 
acceleration is in feet per second squared. Uh, I'm going to draw that for you, but first let's see what the answer book says. This is 1279. And it says the distance is four feet. Yay, we got that. And they said 37.8 feet per second squared. The book says in the answer book, 37.8 feet per second. They just kind of round it off. I think we're we're doing great. Now this is how you do these problems. You you draw your diagram and then you show your work there. And we checked it. We checked with their answer and they were right this time. They usually are. But I was going to draw that uh, acceleration for you. Now it's got a uh, component in the I direction going like that, and that component is five. But the component in the Y direction is humongous. It's 37.5. Uh, yeah. And then the actual acceleration is There's your acceleration. See, this is the a, a y component, and there, that's the x component of the acceleration. And we've just drawn the components. See when they can, can you read that? See when they put a little when they put a little x here down below the a. That that has a meaning. What that means is the x component of the acceleration and see this is this is a with a little y underneath it that has a meaning that's the y component of the acceleration and we have them they're right here they're five and 37 and a half and when you do pythagoras you'll get 37.83 for the actual vector acceleration Okay, well, that was fun. Uh, anybody else uh, have a comment or question on that one? We're, we're delving into two dimensions now. Any comment or any comment or question? Here, here's your chance. And I appreciate uh, you guys when when I forget to put second squared or whatever, jump on me. Okay. Uh, well, let me give you just a tiny bit of theory and we'll work another fun problem. Uh, say goodbye to 1279. All right, goodbye 1279. Okay, uh, <clears throat> let me just give you a preview uh, where we're headed. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to get there yet, but I, I, I do want to tell you that there are three uh, three coordinate systems that we use in here. There's the x, y. We, we just did that. What we just did was an x, y problem, and then there's the uh, uh, normal tangential see, see this is called uh, what rec rectangular this is called rectangular coordinates and, th and then there's a uh, And then there is uh, 
Well, there's the normal tangential coordinates. And those are uh, I think I'd be happier using I and J here. Yeah. Nor normal tangential, they use these unit vectors in the normal and tangential directions. And then they have uh, uh, the radial transverse uh, coordinates. And those are uh, a unit vector in the radial, unit vector in the transverse direction. Hope you can read my writing. That's supposed to be a little in. There are three uh, coordinate systems that we study in this class. There they are. And see, this one is your old familiar friend, the uh, R theta. That it's really polar. Another name for this is polar. Did that show up on the board? Yeah, I think it showed up. This is x, y. Uh, but now on this one, what's really weird about this one is, uh, well, let me just tell you, uh, on this one here, the position vector is equal to x i plus y j. Oh, come on. There we go, y j. Uh, on this one here, the, the position vector is equal to uh, <clears throat> it's equal to uh, it's not x and y it's uh, <clears throat> boy these vacations are bad aren't they you you forget uh, you forget a lot of stuff. Well, I don't want to lie to you. Just a minute. Let me uh, make sure I got this right, okay? Okay, let's see here. Normal tangential. <coughs> Radial transverse. Yeah, here we go. This one is equal to uh, R, which is the magnitude, times the uh, unit vector in the R direction, in, in the radial direction. What's really weird about this system is there is no position vector. The position vector is zero in the normal tangential coordinate system because your position, your um, axis is centered on your moving body and it moves with your body. See, in both of these systems, the, uh, the uh, x, y coordinates stay put, they don't, they don't move. I know that doesn't make a lick of sense, but you got, we're going to be learning about that. Now let's work another problem. But isn't that interesting that in, in this system here, there is no position vector. There, there is in both of these. See, see in this system here, we, we just did one. 
we had an R and it had an X and it had a Y. That's the X, Y uh, coordinate system or the rectangular. In this system here, you've got an X, Y axis and you've got a uh, body here and you have a R here and you have a theta here. And uh, <clears throat> you get, you've got an R and a theta. It's the, old, it's the old polar system that you guys know and love. But in this system here, there is no R because if you could, you could still have an X and Y axis, but if this is the body here and it's moving with a velocity kind of headed almost straight up, the coordinate system is based on your body and it, it looks like this. This is the what they call the uh, tangential direction, and this is what they call the normal direction. And the, the coordinate system moves with your body. You see that body is going like that. When, when the body was down here, the tangential direction was that way. And the normal direction was that way. The coordinate system moves with your body in the normal tangential system. Whereas in these other systems, the coordinate, uh, the X and Y axis doesn't go any place. Well, that's just a preview. I want to give you a pre preview. Now let's work another 2D problem in X and Y. And this one here, I should have asked you for any questions. Are there any questions? Any questions? Okay, well, I'm going to work a, a 2D problem here if I can find what I want. And let's see here. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this is the one I want. This is problem uh, 1297. Okay. Okay, I think we can do this. Okay. Uh, this is problem 1297. It's on page uh, 53. Now, the nice thing about this problem is <clears throat> it's a constant acceleration. Re remember those... Uh, those equations uh, that I showed you that are constant acceleration equations, well, we can use those. It's okay because the acceleration is gravity up and down, and there is no acceleration in the x direction. It doesn't speed up in the x direction. It just goes at a constant speed. Okay, uh, this is a ski, uh, ski ski slope ramp thing. All right, well, let me draw that. And uh, the angle is, uh, it's a three, four, five. I want you guys to memorize the three, four, five. Uh, let, let me talk about that for just a second. If you have a three, four, five, triangle. This angle here is 3687. And this angle here is 5313. I want you to memorize that. Everybody should have that memorized. It's, it's just as important as a 3069. Do, do you remember it? It goes like this. This is 30. 
degrees. This angle up here is 60 degrees. This is one, two, square root of three. You should have that triangle memorized because they use it all the time in problems and in tests. Just, just memorize it. I know you've seen it before. See, in the 30, 60, 90, the, the longest side, the hypotenuse is twice as big as the shortest side. And the angles are 30, 60, and 90. There's your 90. But in the three, four, five, the sides, the sides are three, four, and five, and the angles are like so. Okay, well, we've got a three, four, five here, so let me draw it. Here goes. It's a, a hundred meters. I could actually uh, try to draw this to scale, couldn't I? Let's see if I could. Okay, I'm going to put a uh, 3687 right here with my protractor. That puts me right here. Thirty-six eighty-seven. Now they said that this is a hundred meters. But you're leaving the ramp at a height of four meters because the, the ski slope is up here someplace and your, your skier leaves, leaves the ramp at an angle of 25 degrees. Well, let me, let me measure that. Here goes. We'll measure that. 25 degrees that puts me right about right about there okay hey when you make your when you make your diagrams get a protractor get a ruler Ta -da, there's a ruler and do them to scale okay all right well that's uh that puts me at uh 25 degrees. There, there's his velocity. Now, does he, does he tell you what the velocity is? Uh, it strikes the ground. Uh, no, we have to find it. All we know is uh, he leaves at 25 degrees. See this angle right here? is 25 degrees. He, leave, he leaves the ski slope at 25 degrees. <clears throat> I think there's more of a bit of a curve right in here somehow. Yeah, I like that. I love to watch those skiers in the Winter Olympics do that. So graceful. And <laughs> Some of them mess up though, it's not so graceful. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> now what are we supposed to find out? Oh, well, he's gonna do this, see? He's gonna, he's gonna take off and then he's gonna come down here and he's gonna land somewhere on that slope. That's what he's gonna do. Maybe I should have made this longer, probably. Yeah, that's good enough. Uh, no, 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 I did that wrong. No, no, no. Let me get it right, just a minute. He, he takes off here and he lands here. 
There you go. He lands a distance of 100 meters here. Well, he takes off four, four meters. He climbs up a little bit, and then he descends and lands there. All right, great. Do we know anything else? No, that's it. But we do know this, the acceleration in the Y is, well, it's 9.81 uh, meters per second squared. But the acceleration in the X is zero. It does, he doesn't accelerate in the X. He moves at a constant speed. So we can write, uh, we can use these equations. The distance he travels in the x, we'll just put the origin right here. That'll be fine. There's your, there's your origin. And so the distance he travels in the x is the velocity in the x, which is, uh, well, I don't know what the velocity is, but in the x, it's cosine of 25 times the time. Now that the whole equation I'm using goes like this. But see in the x there is no acceleration and so this term drops out and all you have is the initial velocity in the x. But see, in the x, you have to take the component of 25 degrees. Well, there's the x distance. See, that's represented by this distance here, from here to here. There's your x. Don't know what it is, guys. I do know this angle. It's uh, 3687, right? And now, now, wait a minute. I do know that X, don't I? Is, isn't this distance here 100 times the cosine of 3687? I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know what that is? You can put that in your calculator. Somebody put that in the in their calculator and tell me what that is. We want to find out this distance from here to here, how far he goes in the x direction. Go ahead. It's 80. Yeah, good going. It's 80. Now we're dealing with meters now. So this is equal to 80 meters. We did a great job. Do I need to explain that to anybody? It's just trigonometry. You got a triangle here. It's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. If I need to explain it, you tell me. But now here's the problem. I don't, I don't know the time. And I don't know this initial velocity. But let's talk about the y direction now. We're going to do the y direction. Now the y direction goes from here to here. See, that's, that's the y direction, or the, the y distance that he has to travel. And I tell you what that is. Well, it's going to be negative. He's going down, but he's going to, he's going to have four, four meters, and he's going to have to add the distance from here to here, which is which is a hundred sine of thirty six eighty seven. Somebody do that for me, and tell me how far this distance is here. Should be sixty. It's uh, say that again. 
Should be 60. Uh, well, if you add four to it, shouldn't it make it 64? Oh, 64, yeah. yeah. We think that he goes down, well, you could say it's a negative 64 if you, if you wanted to. You could say negative 64 meters that he travels down. Okay, well, that's interesting. Uh, now, now, what do they want? Just a minute, let me read this and see what they want. Uh, they want they want to know what this initial speed is. Hmm. Well, I don't know. Uh, why don't we use this equation here? Uh, do I have room? Does that show up? Yeah, I think it will. Make it a little higher. Okay, here's the plan. The, the distance that he's going to go down is going to equal to uh, v sub o in the y sine of 25 t minus one half 9.81 t squared. What, what I'm using is this equation here, only I'm doing it in the y direction. See, this is in the y direction. And I know what the acceleration is in the y direction. It's 9.81, but it's going down. He starts off, though, going up. A positive, see, here's your v0. He's going up. V0 sine of 25, that's his velocity. It's going up in the y times the time. But then you have to subtract one half, 9.81 t squared. Okay, good deal. But don't we know what that y is? Isn't it 64 meters? I think it's 64. Uh, well, it's negative 64, isn't it? He goes down 64 meters. Is that right? I'm not sure. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit confused to tell you the truth. Uh, he goes down 64 meters. Uh, that much we do know. And it should equal, we should be able to write that with this equation here. It's just that we don't know what this is and we don't know what the time is. I don't want a y here though. I just want the v sub zero sine of 25. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, I don't know if we got enough information to solve this or not. Uh, let me circle these two equations here. Here's an equation with two unknowns, v sub zero and t. But you know what? I think we've got an equation here with two unknowns. v sub zero and t. We have two equations and two unknowns. We might be able to solve that and find out both unknowns. That'd be fun. Okay, let's try that. We got an algebra problem to do now. If these equations are right, what do you guys think? Think I've got correct equations there? Well, let's try it and see what happens. Here goes. I've got two equations and two unknowns, and we're going to do some algebra now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write this like this. 
T is equal to 80 divided by V sub zero cosine of 25 degrees. You guys can get to there with me, right? T equals 80, yeah, that's good. Now, if I plug that T into here, here's what I'll have. I'll have minus 64 equals V sub zero sine of 25 times T. I think what when you get through canceling out stuff, I think you'll wind up with a tangent of 25. See, if you put 80 over V sub zero, the V sub zeros cancel out and you'll have sine over cosine of 25. Yeah, I think that's right. Then we go minus one half 9.81 T squared. Hey, look guys, we got us a one equation with one unknown, if I did that right. What do you think? Uh, well, looks pretty good. Did, did, any question, anybody get, get lost yet? Or, or maybe we got lost a long time ago? Shouldn't you put 80 over V naught cosine 25 in for T squared as well? Uh, it, hey, 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 you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. But uh, do I have to? Don't you just lose all your variables then? Uh, like you can't actually solve that, that's for anything. That's an intelligent that. question. She's saying put 80 over V sub zero cosine of 25 in here for the, for the T. Well, why do I have to do that? Well, then we could solve for V sub naught. Oh, yes, you could. But I think this is legal too. The beauty of this, I think we can get the T this way. What do you think? Let's try it. I think what you said is correct. Okay, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna solve this and see what I get for T. Here it goes, we'll see if this works. I wonder if that's right. I'm getting an answer. Yeah, there's a little room over here. I'm getting an answer of T is 4.54, I don't know, four something seconds. Did, it, did I do this problem before, I wonder? Let me see. Let me dig around here and see. That might be right. Mm. Totally organized as always here. Uh, let me look in here. How are we doing on time? Oh, we got it. We got it made. We well, no, wait a minute. When do we get out of here? We start at nine thirty, right? Ten thirty. Oh, gee, we only have six minutes left, right? Right. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, we're running out of time. Uh, but we do have six minutes. You, you can do a lot in six minutes. Uh, I can't find it, but I'll tell you what. I got 4.54 also for a T. Good going. Excellent. Well, see, now we can figure out uh, V sub zero. Is that what they wanted? Did they ask for V sub zero? Yeah. Okay. Well, we can figure it out now. See, look, guys, if we know what this time is, 
we and if it's four point blah blah we can solve for v sub zero here goes i'm going to do that now i'm going to do that I wonder if that's right. I wonder, I'm getting a V sub zero of 19.42 uh, meters a second, if what we did is right. Uh, let, I got 19.83. I want to see what the answer book says. What, what was this, 1297? I'm going to see what they said. Twelve ninety seven. They said the V sub zero, or they call it VA, is nineteen point four. Well, that's what we got. How about that? Even the blind squirrel finds a finds a nut now and then. The book says nineteen point four meters per second. That, that's the book answer. You know what? They just rounded off. It's 19.42. Now, what else did they say? 19, 1297. They said, um, oh, they wanted something else. Do we have time to get it? Let's see. Oh, ho, ho. we have three and a half minutes left. Now, you've got your homework. It's on Blackboard. And my IT person is trying to give you a link to where you can submit your homework on blackboard to me my it person is my youngest uh, daughter she's 30. my oldest daughter is 51. but uh, let's answer we have oh we have three minutes left let's answer the other question we've done everything correct everything is correct but they wanted to know the speed at which he strikes the ground see when when he comes here he has a velocity that he hits the ground okay uh i just need some room to to write that here goes <clears throat> Don't have much time here to do this in, but we, we have three minutes. You can do a lot in three minutes. I think uh, football games have been won in the last three minutes. I think they've been won in the last 15 seconds, much less three minutes. Now, now here's the deal, guys. The, the velocity is equal to v sub x squared plus v sub y squared. And the thing is, we know what v sub x is. It is 19.42 cosine of 25. Do I need to explain how come we know V sub X? Well, I guess you're okay with that. Now, V sub Y is a little harder. What it is is 1942 sine of 25 minus 9.81 times the time. I, I, if I had time, I would write the equation. I don't, I don't have time, but we can get that. We know the time. Plug it in and we'll get V sub Y. Here we go. Take your, uh, first of all, let me get that. This is 17.6.
Now I'm going to get this. So I'm going to get my, and you, you remember what this is. This is the Y component. See that little Y they stick down there? That stands for something. It stands for the Y component of the velocity. Now we're talking about the velocity when it hits. Okay, what's the time? 4.544 times 9.81, but wait a minute, that's negative, plus 1942 times sine of 25. I'm getting 7.744. It should be minus. There's something screwy going on here. It should be minus. Uh, let, let, I forgot. Let me do it. Let me do it again. 19.42 times the sine of 25. Minus 9.81 times the 4.544. Yeah, it's minus. This is a screw up. I don't know what I did wrong here, but I'm getting minus 36. Anybody getting minus 36.37? Uh, for the velocity in the Y? But see what they wanted us to do is they wanted us to do this. I think that's what they're after. Yeah. Okay. Square that, square that, take the square root. Let's see what we get. And then we'll have to quit. It's sad. Well, I'm getting a velocity when, when you plug all that stuff in of 40, 40.5. Meters a second. Well, let's see how we did on that. Well, what problem was this? Uh, this was 1297, right? And they said 40.4. <clears throat> well, that's what we got. That's what I'm talking about. Even a blind squirrel finds a nut now and then. That's that's what they got. They got forty point four when it strikes the uh, the ramp. Okay, it's sad, but our time together has come to an end. In fact, I think I overstepped a couple of minutes. I'm going to sign out, but here's your last chance to say something. Go ahead and speak up. So for both elementary dynamics and strength and materials are we submitting uh through like on blackboard yes or? submit submit okay. your homework on blackboard follow the syllabus on how i want homework done and and i'm trying to show you how i want homework done only i didn't write it out i was too lazy to write it out i want you to write out word for word the problem in your book submit that on blackboard on your uh, link. I think you're going to have to take a picture of it if you have a cam, uh, what do they call that? A uh, You guys know more about computers than I do. <sighs> anyway, I've done this now for a couple of semesters and my students have figured out how to submit it on Blackboard. Do your best, uh, and you have time. I, it's not due to what what we decide Saturday. I think that's right. Okay. Thanks. Anybody else comment or question? Okay. Well, I'm going to sign off. It's been fun, and I will see you guys. What Monday? Right? Yeah. Monday at nine thirty. Right? Okay. Adiós, muchachos.